<laughs> we, are, uh, we get to invite uh, to give our message today. Moms, there's, uh, there is no better mother for you to hear from than my mom. It is an honor. Our neighbor, Miss Pat Booth. Let's make it good. Hyper 
She's going to have this baby naturally, but she's going to have this big rolling ball. So she took all that to the hospital, rolling ball, to have her back. And she bought all this stuff that was going to make this childbearing easier. She had this aroma thing going, and it was laughing her all over. I mean, we thought she was at a party somewhere, you know. And, and she had this music. But the bottom line, it still hurt. I <laughs> want you to do it. It hurts. And then my daughter-in-law, Megan, had her baby. She, she said she, she didn't get intimidated by these two. She said, I will try. And Megan got in and she said, forget this stuff. Give me that girl. <laughs> Talk about my great my granddaughter. Now she's a bulldog. And when she left that baby, she went out, I'm having this baby. <laughs> but she ended up having a cesarean section. But it doesn't really matter this morning how you deliver. The point is, we take different approaches, but we all become mothers on those days. And your life changed. For most of us, the moment we found out we were having a baby, we become that baby's protector. Our instincts kicked in, and we wanted to protect that baby, though we haven't met it yet. And for some this morning, not only are you mothers, but you're wives. And some of you this morning are the sole providers for your home. Our days are full of, where's my shoes? I'm hungry. Did you wash my uniform? I have to be in soccer. I have to be in dance. I've got to do this. Would you come on, Mom? Dad, Mom, Mom, come on. And you just want to put a sign around your neck and says, not you. Unavailable. Forget my name. I don't exist. But we're stressed this morning, as Jason pointed out earlier. We're stressed no, to our limits. No matter how hard we try, we can't do it all, as the song says. We just want to cry. The load gets so heavy. If it's not our children, it's our husbands. If it's not our husbands, it's our in-laws. If it's not our in-laws, it's our friends. And we won't even talk about the workplace, the housework, the cooking, washing clothes, the list goes on and on. So much this morning is laid on our shoulders. All you feel like doing sometimes is just throwing your hands up. The challenge is great this morning, but you are up for it. Now, I'm going to take liberties this morning with some things in the Word, and it might be fun. And I hope most of you get it if you don't. I expect to do it, I'll explain it to you. But I want for a minute to look at a group of women. Now, how many of this room knows that when women get together, we are not like me? <laughs> we just bear our souls, honey. We don't mind throwing it out there. We just talk. And I mean, we will talk about this. Some of the darnest things. <laughs> now, men, you'll never get around a bunch of men with this. No way. You'll never hear a man go on a trip or a golf game. I just feel used. I just, I, just, I, just, I just feel like I can't go on. <laughs> I mean, I can know what goes on the golf tournaments and he's golfing. You'll never hear men do that. But women, oh, we are different. We get together, we let our hair down, and we come out there and we're going to tell it like it is. We're going to talk. So I want you to picture this group of women out for a girl's night out. My girl, Eve, comes, she's the one that starts the conversation. Y'all don't know how bad I had it on. The cops and quick downs, and Adam telling me my, his life would be different if it wasn't for me. He blames me for all his mistakes. You would think I put the apple in his mouth. And then another girl speaks up. Her name's Leah. I know how you feel. My husband told me he never loved me and to make it worse that he was in love with my sister. And if that wasn't bad enough, some days after watching him 
want my sister so much, I feel so worthless and ugly. And no value to anyone. And then, Zippor spoke up. I cry a lot too, but it's not because of Moses. It's because of his family. They hate me. They let me know it every chance they get. I can't cook, I can't dress, I can't say the right thing. I'm not good enough. And then Rebecca starts to cry. I just don't know what I'm gonna do. My boys are fighting to the point that it's turned our family apart. There is no peace to be found. I don't want to take sides, but I feel I'm not. And then Abigail speaks up. I don't know what to do anymore. My husband drinks until he passes out, but until he does, I have to hear verbal abuse, and he's mean to everyone. I can't take it anymore. Anybody got a tissue? And Mikhail speaks up. She actually laughs at him. You think you have problems? I live in a soap opera. My husband had an affair, got him knocked up, and brought him home to live with me. <laughs> then my children acted out. One raped his half-sister, and then her brother killed him. I feel hopeless. Ladies, can you relate to any of these women how they feel? We're not exempt from life situations. We're not exempt from problems and trials coming into our families. But what I want you to remember this morning is you're not alone. You're not helpless in your struggles. When we submit our life to God, we have a hope. In Psalm 32 and 8, he says, the Lord says, and this is the New Living Version I'm reading from, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. It doesn't mean that you're going to be exempt from troubles, but when we give it to God, we know he is in control. He says, I will guide you. This is a problem with us today. We don't want to be guided by no one but ourselves. We don't want to put our trials and our troubles in his hands because it might cost us something. We may have to do things a little different than what we used to do. But he says, I will guide you. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, he says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You can face your situations because he's got you back. You can go through whatever you have to go through this morning because he's got your back. You may not see it. You may not understand what's going on. But I'm telling you right now, when you put it in God's hand, it is a sure foundation. He is going to guide you and direct your path for the best in your life. This morning, my main topic was one broke mom, and I am going to hurry because I've got to be short on time. And I'm going to go into that now. One broke mom. I kept feeling I needed to tell this story, and I'm going to obey God and do it. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 17 through 16, Elijah has stood up to King Ahab. He told him there would be no rain until he said so. This brought on a drought. God told Elijah to go to the other side of Jordan, and there the ravens would feed him. Eventually, the brook dried up. God spoke to him. He said, go to Zarephon. There will be a woman whom I have instructed to feed you. Now, I want to look at the scriptures real quick right here. He gets up and he does as God said. He said, I have instructed a woman who lives there. Now, you have to understand, this woman was a Gentile. 
She had worshipped heathen gods. But somewhere along the line, she stopped worshiping those gods. Now, it says that he was going to instruct her. Let me explain to you what instruction is talking about. He's talking about, I am working in her heart. I am speaking to her. I am putting a path before her. And when the time comes, she will answer the call. See, when you are in your struggles, this is where you go for the instructions. There's not a question that you have that he can't give you the answer. There's not a situation this morning that you're facing that he doesn't have a word for you. There was a lady in our church for years, and she kept coming to me, and she wanted me to tell her to do what was in her heart. And my answer was to her, I cannot give you permission. I said, but I can show you how to get it. I said, you give him the word. And I guess it may be a year after I finally just, I got tired of hearing it. And she said, she called me and she said, she read me a scripture. It did not mean a thing to me. I'm honest, it didn't mean a thing to me. But through that word, she got the answer that she needed for her situation. I can't give you the answers. God can show you what to do. And he was preparing this woman. And so it says he got up and he went to Zarephath and he came to the entrance of the village and he met a woman. A widow gathered the fire. She was gathering the firewood. He asked her, please, would you bring me a little water in a jug? I need a drink. And as she went to get it, he called out, and while you're at it, would you bring me something to eat? Now, I'm, 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 you have to be in my head. I'm, I'm going to, what the cow? What do you think I am? You're slave? I'm going to get you a drink. And now you want me to get your food too? I mean, that's a lot of liberty for somebody I don't even know. Now, I know man, and I'd give him uh, some more, but if he could buy, I told him to fix him something to eat. I'm like, man, what do you think you meant? <laughs> but he walks up to her and he says this. And she looks back at him. And I want to correct She said, I swear. I'm like, yeah, I swear too. <laughs> you tell me what they are. She says, as surely as your God lives, I don't have as much as a biscuit. I have a handful of flour, a gin and a jar, and a little oil in a bottle. You found me scratching together just enough flour to make a last meal for my son and me. And after we eat, we're going to die. Not often the question now, how was she planning on me dying? Does anybody else? That's just me. I mean, I mean, we're going to eat, we're going to die. I mean, I eat, I hope God will be leaving, but you want to go. We're going to die. And Elijah said to her, don't worry about a thing. Go ahead and do what you said, but first make a biscuit for me and bring it back here. Then go ahead and make a meal with what you have left for you and your son. This is the word of God of Israel. The jar of flour will not run out, and the bottle of oil will not become empty because God sends rain on the land and ends this drought. He says, in other words, if you do what I'm asking, God's going to make sure the flour is going to stay there and the oil is going to stay there with this thing in the end. And she got up and she did it, just as a as a larger ass. And he and as he said, the jar ran <clears throat> empty. This mother was alone. She was broke. She had no husband. She had a son. No insurance. No job. She was one lone broke mother. She had two of life's biggest problems: no income. And nobody had bills. She was desperate, helpless, but something inside of her started churning. Just maybe if I do what the man of God says, things will change. What do I have to lose? I'm dying anyway. Think about that for a minute. Sometimes your desperation, you get to the end of it, and you don't know what else you're going to do. 
And as she looked at this thing, her heart started churning. And she went against what she feared and received a miracle. Women, this morning, you may need a miracle. And I'm going so this morning purposely because somebody needs to receive it. You need to get it in your spirit. Jason's been pounding this for weeks and weeks and weeks. There is somebody in Zoan Baptist Church that God is trying to reach. He is trying to tell you you feel desperate. You feel hopeless. You feel worthless. But I'm here to tell you this morning you're not. And if you would just get in my word, if you would just find the word that I have for you and you stand on it, you're going to see a miracle. You're going to see doors open up. But it's going to cost you something. You're going to have to stand on it with everything you've got. When the, when the skies get dark and everything is crumbling around you, you're going to have to stand and see Jesus only. A mother's love is one of those things with our children we will go the extra mile. There's no great thing. I think a mother's love is next to the closest thing to God's love we ever get. She loves you when you're bad. She loves you when you're good. When you make her proud and when you disappoint her, she loves you. She will do whatever she can to protect you from harm. This morning, one broke mom called a glimmer of hope through a man of God. And she says, I'm going to believe his God. I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to do what he asked me. People, if you don't think that took courage, she had just spoke, I'm going to eat a biscuit and you are going to die. There was no greater hopelessness than what that woman was feeling at that moment. But as much as she loved that child, she said, God, you're speaking something into my spirit. And I'm going to go with it. I'm going to trust the man of God because I love my son. I love him with all my heart. I am willing to take a chance. And I'm going to wind this thing down. I'm almost over with I have a story I'm going to read to you that just speaks what a mother's love really is. In 2012, there was an earthquake. And after the devastation that happened in Japan, the rescuers were going through the rubble and they come to one house and there was a little hole and they were looking down in and there was a woman. And it was kind of, they said it was strange because the woman was then in a worshiping position and he stuck his hand and she was cold and stiff. There was nothing that they could do for her. And so they got up and they left her there and they went up to the next house. But the, the leader of the team felt an over-compelling force that he had to go back to that house. He went back to the ruined house and back to the dead woman. And as he knelt, he used his hand through the narrow crack to search the space again. And as he w went through the hole, I have a picture of it, you don't believe it. As he went through the hole, suddenly, as he touched the woman, somebody, a baby, screamed. And with excitement, he started yelling, a child, there's a child. And all of a sudden, the whole team come together and they remove the piles and the objects around the dead woman. And there under her worship position was a three-month-old baby boy. And he was wrapped in a flowery blanket under his dead mother. The woman had made the ultimate sacrifice for her son. 
The little baby had fell right back to sleep when the lady picked him up. The medical doctor come, and as he opened the blanket of the baby, a cell phone fell out of the blanket. And the text message read, if you can survive, you must remember, I love you. They passed the cell phone around to all the workers. And each worker heard the message and they cried. If you can survive, you must remember that I love you. That mother paid the ultimate sacrifice for the love of her child. A mother's love will cause you to endure relationships, say things you wouldn't normally say to protect your child. There is no limits to what a mother will do for her children. This morning, God is standing in this church and he's reaching out his arms to you. He's saying if you can survive your situation, Remember, I love you. Would you stand to you? This morning in this altar call, I would like for all the ladies in the church, if you want, would you just come and stand in front of the church? Just come stand in front of the church.
greatest things we can do is um, embrace these moments, these, these moments where uh, the Bible says that uh, the, the Kairos moment, the moment at hand in which God is speaking. And God is speaking, and, and He is ministering. And what a, what a great word. What a great word. <laughs> Speaking at a graduation next Saturday, and one of the points I'm bringing to the people is that as you go through life and as you embark on your journey, one of the greatest things you can do, what you can do, is embrace the broken moments, because it's it's in the breaking that the blessing comes. Remember when Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish, and it was every time he broke, it was being blessed. That it kept multiplying every day, moms, as you are broken. Please know you're being. You're being blessed, and God is doing amazing things for you. I hope everyone has a great Mother's Day. I hope this day continues to be fantastic for you. I hope that um, I hope you'll come back next Sunday as we'll continue in Romans. We're going back to finish the latter part of Romans 8. I'm excited about that. Um, and ladies, make sure that you leave your crowd a beautiful flower that we have for you. I get plugged into our church schedule. There's all kinds of things happening in and around the church. Don't forget our midweek Bible studies. And let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you today for this moment. We thank you for this hour. And we thank you for your words. Your words that echo throughout the ages. Lord, you have, Lord, you have spoken through that which has been spoken. Words that were written thousands ago, thousands of years ago, Lord. They are fresh. They are living. They are breathing. And today they minister to our spirits. Lord, may we apply them to our hearts. May they serve as an encouragement. May they serve as a light into our path. May they lead us, direct us, and take us to the place you have us to go. Lord, may our mothers feel love to today and every day for that matter. Lord, go with us. Let us be a light into this world. Lord, we pray these things to your holy, your precious, your mighty name. Amen. Amen.